33 new companies issued debt yesterday with investors snapping up $46 billion in new bonds. Both are records for the debt market. But stocks didn't get that optimistic memo selling off to start off September on disappointing data. And we saw this again last month. Remember that sell off in early August thanks to the unraveling of the yen carry trade? The Dow fell more than 1,000 points on August 5th. The S&P and the Nasdaq were down 3 percent. But just two days later, at least 17 companies issued new debt and the Dow finished the month higher by nearly 2 percent. My next guest says it's buybacks that help keep these drops short and that they might be enough once again this time around. Joining me now is Brian Reynolds, the chief market strategist at Reynolds Strategy. Brian, it's great to see you again. Um, let's just kind of start with yesterday and what stood out the most to you about this corporate debt activity. Well, as you mentioned, we set two records yesterday. Uh, it was the number of companies coming to market that was an all-time record with 33 companies and $46 billion in new debt was a record for the day after Labor Day. Usually there's a surge in issuance after Labor Day, but this was spectacular. Same thing happened last month, too. We had this drawdown in stocks, but equity investors and credit investors are sometimes on very different planes. I know equity investors are worried about a downdraft and a recession, but usually if there's a bad uh, situation going to happen for equities, it usually starts with credit. This is the opposite. I've never seen credit investors more bullish in terms of the amount of money they're putting to work. And so in August, we had this very short-lived VIX spike, this very dramatic but ultimately short-lived market move. And do you, and what did you see taking place in August? I mean, the same kind of thing, even though it's usually a quiet month for corporate debt issuance, was there enough to at least tell you, okay, credit investors are optimistic, they will, this will keep the market buoyant? Well, there were two things. One was the amount of money coming into credit from pension funds. Pensions are underfunded and they're overly optimistic on yields, so they have to put money to work in credit on an aggressive basis. They did that in August. They're doing it again this month. The other thing with the VIX, it wasn't just a VIX spike. It was an inversion of the VIX curve, where short-dated VIX options were higher priced than the longer-dated ones. So equity investors were so scared, they were paying up for short-term protection when longer-term protection was cheaper. When that happens, that tells you that's an irrational panic. And it usually winds down within a month, although we were surprised last month because it was shorter than we thought it was, what it would be. But we're seeing the same thing again. It inverted yesterday. That tells us within a month or so, this panic in equities it will be over and we'll see buybacks coming in to lift stock prices back up. Do you, I mean, I don't know quite how to tie this all together. And you've been very eloquent about the connection between corporate buybacks and a, and a rising stock market. I mean, going back 10 or 15 years. So it seems like we're still in that cycle. But this time around, interest rates are higher. Now, the Fed might be cutting next month. But when I look at companies issuing all this debt, and I, it's not to say that they're tied to the overnight Fed funds rate, but why not wait a little bit and see if rates are coming down? Does the Fed timing of, of potential cuts tie into this activity at all? Well, it's not, it's not just high rates, but it's rates relative to expectations. So pensions think yields are going to be much higher for longer, and they're missing out on that. So they're creating this tremendous demand for corporate debt because they were wrong about rates being higher for longer. Companies, while rates are high, they're lower than they were six months ago, a year ago, two years ago. And they can take this money and put it to work at buying back their stock at a relative valuation that's not, it, that's not bad. Exactly. And then that kind of keeps the daisy chain going. So are you overall feeling pretty bullish on equities despite valuations and kind of the top heaviness of the market and all of the other factors that can be somewhat worrisome? Over time, yes, I'm bullish. This won't prevent drawdowns like we saw in August and yesterday because equity investors are scared. They're frightened of a recession. And Wall Street buyback desks will not prevent the drop in stock prices. But once the drop in stock prices runs its course, once the selling is washed out, that's when the buyback desks come into work and they start to, br to bring stock prices back up, especially when you get moving averages crossing above one another, like a five or a 10 day or a 10 day or a 50 day moving average. That's when the buyback desks make the most money for their clients. And that's when you get these bottoms, when you think the world is ending, all of a sudden you go right back up. And that's what happened last month. That's what happened last spring. That's what's probably going to happen this fall with this pullback.